Hello, and welcome to this animation explaining the backpack of life. The backpack of life is a backpack that we each carry around with us that can shape how we are in life and relationships. The backpack of life is a fantastic family therapy metaphor for what we carry with us through life or the experiences and lessons life hands down to us and gives us over time. The positives, the challenges, the scary, amazing experiences and adverse experiences. A backpack of life can influence us directly and also subtly. Most people don't take the time to consider what's in their backpack and how it can both hinder and help in life, love and relationships. Most of the things in that backpack will be great assets and some might create challenges. What types of things does our backpack influence? Beliefs about ourselves, others, and the world around us. How we understand and engage in relationships, romantic relationships, friendships, family relationships, work relationships, parenting values and practices, communication, what it's okay or not to talk about and how to talk, share, connect, negotiate and solve problems. And work aspirations. What type of work, how to be at work, what work means or doesn't mean, how we balance work and other aspects of life. What goes into our backpack of life? A backpack of life is filled with a whole range of things. From things that we haven't experienced, that were handed down to us by past generations, to lessons from our first school of life and love. That's our family of origin. To the experiences we accumulate as we move through life. Well, let's talk about the influence of past generations. If you're curious about how past generations contributed to your backpack of life and how this can influence you, let's consider this example. Imagine a family in which Mary was the great grandmother Mary was born not long after the end of the Second World War and she grew up during the Great Depression. These were tough times. Resources like money, food and clothing were scarce. She had to put newspaper in her shoes when the soles wore thin, mend her clothes to make them last as long as possible, find meals that fed the family with little money and reuse as many things as possible because there just wasn't money for new things. In fact, to this day, Mary still reuses the bread bag multiple times instead of buying plastic bags, uses tea bags two or three times, and has trouble throwing out leftover food. Her family often give her fridge a clean out when they visit. For Mary, waste was not only frowned upon, it was a problem for getting through life. Mary developed lots of skills and a thrifty nature. She grew up, married, and had children. Things were a little easier by the time she was raising her family, but she still held on to what life had taught her about surviving scarcity and passed down values to her children, including not being wasteful, working hard, saving money for the future, and that love and good times require togetherness and not lots of money. And now imagine Mary's daughter, Sally, who is now a grandmother in the family. Sally met and married a man who shared her values and they worked hard to provide for the family they started. They shared values of hard work and saving money just in case something is needed. They never experienced the scarcity that great grandmother Mary did, but money was tight and they had a strong belief that it's important not to waste good things and to use things up. At the dinner table, Sally felt uncomfortable when her children didn't finish their meals, and she told them stories of starving children in Africa who would appreciate the food. There's enough money for everyone to have enough clothes in their wardrobe, but Mary had taught Sally how to sew, and Sally teaches her children how to mend their clothes, because there's still plenty of wear in them. Sally's children, they watch her use the same tea bag two or three times. And now imagine Sally's children are growing up and starting their own family. Anne is Mary's granddaughter, 
a direct descendant of the thrifty, clever, loving Mary. Anne's never experienced scarcity. She grew up with enough food, access to gourmet foods her parents didn't experience, and enough money for meals out and regular family holidays. But on the family holidays, the family always packs groceries for snacks and some meals to make the holiday budget go further and not waste money. Anne can sew and mends her favorite clothing items if they get a tear, not because she can't buy more, but because she likes them and it would be a shame to waste them. Anne's children are encouraged to work hard with their studies to better their lot in life and build their future security, as well as getting a part-time job while studying to save up because it's important to have money in the bank. Anne teaches the kids how to take up their hem on their pants and skirts and mend a tear. Important skill, she says, to save money. So now we have a family with teenagers. These teenagers can mend, hem, they work to save money and feel a little guilty when they splurge on a treat. They study hard to do their best at school, sometimes wrestling with stress and anxiety about their grades. They reuse their coffee bag because there's more than one use in it and enjoy tuck shop only once a week, even though the family can afford it much more often because that would be a waste of money. These teenagers have never known the direct effects of scarcity, but their lives have been shaped by it. The family legacy has been handed down as seen in their behaviors and beliefs. The family legacy most likely also includes family stories, maybe of cleverness in thrift, hard work to rise in life, resilience in the face of adversity, creativity in finding solutions, or the value of close family ties. Sometimes family legacies also include or can be laden with adverse experiences, loss and trauma. And these experiences can also be passed down in the same way from great grandmothers to their great grandchildren. Another source of experiences for our backpack of life is our first school of life and love. That's our family of origin. This idea of our family of origin as our first school of life and love is another great family therapy metaphor and a good way to understand these experiences. Our family of origin is our first school because it's the first place in which we learn about ourselves, our relationships and the world around us. The way we are nurtured, disciplined and raised provides lessons about our worth, rules for behavior, emotions, communication and connection. Our family of origin existed in a community culture, social and economic context, as well as a particular era in time. These layers of context will impact the first school. As we grow up, we have many other life experiences that also add to our backpack of life. We have experiences at school with friends, peers, teachers, and any clubs or groups we're involved in. We have experiences outside school, maybe playing sport, learning an instrument, or at drama club, church, reading, watching shows on TV, spending time with pets, family, extended family, and friends. We may have experiences at TAFE or university, entering the workforce and working. We have experiences in nature. Some people will experience travel, migration, and other cultures and walks of life. Growing up means that as we move through life, we all face changes and challenges. Changes in life, like becoming teenagers, then young adults, then adults. Changes like partnering up and starting a family, or a change of career path, or moving interstate or overseas. We can also face unwanted changes and challenges like relationship breakups, fertility struggles, accidents, losses and traumas. All of our experiences are in our backpack of life and are part of who we are. The thing is, 
We don't always take the time to think about our backpack and what's in it and how it invites us to live our life on autopilot, including becoming stuck in sometimes unhelpful patterns and ways of being. If we want to choose to live with intention, it's helpful to consider our backpack of life. Understanding where we come from, the emotional processes and patterns in our family of origin, especially patterns developed to deal with stress and tensions, and considering what life has put into our backpacks is a first step in intentional, mindful living. The next step is using this knowledge to decide how to be, to decide in relation to your backpack, what do you want to hold on to? What do you want to shape up or change? What would you like to grow from? What would you like to let go of? How do you want to define yourself? How do you want to choose to live your life? Taking some time to consider your backpack can really help in defining who you are as a person and consciously deciding on your values and principles and how to be your best self. So now that you know about your backpack of life, you might like to consider these questions. What is in your backpack that hinders you And what would you like to do about this? What is in your backpack that helps you? And how would you like to be more conscious of this? If this idea has caught your interest, visit my website to access more fantastic free content with blogs and resources. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And check out my online courses at drleonewhite.teachable.com. And if you're in Australia and would like to find a family therapist, visit the website for the Australian Association of Family Therapy. Thank you and goodbye for now.